Mr. President, a year ago, artillery and gunfire erupted in the capital of Sudan. Smoke filled the airs, people ran for their lives. It was the beginning of a vicious war between two armed factions. The SAF, the Sudanese, Sudanese Armed Forces, and RSF, the Paramilitary Rapid Support Forces. In the last year, there has been absolutely devastation in Sudan. At every turn, unarmed Sudanese have been in the crosshairs. These armed groups have committed extrajudicial killings. They have indiscriminately bombed civilian targets like hospitals. They have used rape and sexual violence against women of certain ethnic groups as a weapon of war. They have raised cities and towns, killing inhabitants and strangling commerce and trade. They have destroyed farmlands and forced farmers to leave, preventing harvests. They have looted humanitarian supplies, attacked aid workers, and blocked aid delivery. The World Food Program's Sudan director said this May could bring unprecedented levels of starvation. According to the United Nations, more than 15,000 people have been reported killed, with an additional 10 to 15,000 in one town in Darfur alone. Eight million people have fled their homes. 25 million, including 14 million children, need humanitarian assistance, very basic materials like food, water, medicine, and clothing. The president of Doctors Without Borders has said Sudan is one of the worst crises the world has seen for decades. As I speak, the town of Al Fasher is under siege. Millions of civilians are trapped in that city, which is controlled by the SAF. The people in this town have no access to aid, and the international community has no plan to protect them should the RSF amount full-scale assault. My colleague in the Senate, on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, Senator Booker, has just come back from the region. He gave us a firsthand account of the hunger, the violence, and the trauma the Sudanese people are facing. Last week, Samantha Power testified in front of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee about the imminent famine. And just this week, the Royal Wallenberg Center for Human Rights released a report concluding that the RSF is committing genocide in Sudan. The evidence is clear and overwhelming. We must take action now. At this week's humanitarian conference in Paris, the United States announced an additional $100 million in aid to respond to the conflict. The United States has been the largest donor to date. The French are also saying that they'll raise more than 2 billion euros. Money pledged is not money in hand, however, and we need all to do more. I am pleased that when the Senate passed the security funding supplemental, it included more than $9 billion in additional, additional humanitarian aid. Part of that humanitarian aid would go to help the people of Sudan. I know there is bipartisan support for humanitarian aid in Congress. Yet, despite the heroic efforts of my colleagues on the Appropriations Committee, the foreign assistance budget for this year declined in some parts of the USA, USAID by as much as 10 percent. We need to expand the pie, not shrink it. Otherwise, when we try to address one crisis, we have to take money from another emergency circumstance. We should not have to choose between starving, saving starving Sudanese or saving starving Gazans. We should not have to choose between helping Haitians or helping Ukrainians. Every life is precious, and every day we wait matters. I hope my colleagues in the House who are still debating the supplemental funding bill understand that. There's so many reasons why they need to pass the supplemental. I would have hoped they would have taken our bill and passed it. They now have a different formulation of it. I hope they will get to us as soon as possible. The, fundamental, the supplemental funding, uh, funding bill. Yes, it's critical for Ukraine. Absolutely. 
They literally are depending on that supplemental to have the ammunitions and support they need to defend themselves against Russia. It's important for our friends in the Middle East, for Israel. It's important for the Indo-Pacific. Mr. President, it's absolutely essential for the humanitarian aid that's included in that supplemental, the people of Sudan. Russia is relentlessly bombing and destroying Ukraine's oil and gas every energy sector. Ukraine is running out of ammunition. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin has said Ukraine's survival is in danger. Any delay in the supplemental funding means the security situation gets worse, just as the humanitarian situation gets worse. Famine has been declared only twice in the past 13 years. Gaza and Sudan will be next unless we act. On famine pre prevention, efforts have a good tra track record. In 2017, we prevented three out of the four potential famines after Congress passed the supplemental appropriation bill. America's strength is in our values. The global community depends upon our leadership. Our values demand that we don't stand by when people are starving. We have the capacity and we certainly need to act and show that we live by actions on our values. Ultimately, the only situation, solution to the crisis in Sudan is for the two sides to sit down and negotiate peace. We gotta stop the warring factions and we gotta stop the outside country support that have chosen sides here and are adding to the civil war that's taking place. But in the meantime, there must allow unfettered humanitarian access throughout the country. So Mr. President, as we mark the one year anniversary of the conflict, I wanna to say to the international community, to the Biden administration, my view as chair of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee is we need to act now. We need other donors to step up and put their money where their mouths are now. We need to support Sudan's neighbors who are hosting countless refugees now. We need diplomatic talks to end the war in Sudan to resume now. It is time to set a date. And finally, to my colleagues in the House, you need to act now to pass the supplemental appropriation bill that we sent to you in mid-February and provide a lifeline to the millions of Sudanese whose lives are on the line. We must not stand by idly and watch them perish. Mr. President, I urge us all to act with that urgency. I would suggest the absence of a quorum.